The issues management process begins and ends with data or intelligence. At the heart of it, this process, like all strategic communication efforts, should be also viewed as a learning process where we better understand what went well that we should replicate in the future, as well as what needs to be addressed now or should be addressed differently in the future. Think of the evaluation stage as the bridge to ongoing issues management that wraps up particular actions taken so that the organization can assess and add the outcomes to their scanning, monitoring, and decision-making in the future. Consideration of the evaluation stage shouldn't necessarily come last in the sequence. Thinking about how relative levels of success can be measured and evaluated and lessons learned developed are an inherent part of each of the stages. It's just that it's formalized and executed at the last stage. So what's entailed? There are three components to evaluation. First, setting clear and measurable objectives lays out the thresholds for evaluating the relative success of the issues management process. These should be aligned with the goals set up in the decision-making process and tied to the risks identified earlier. In short, just like everything else that we do, we begin by establishing what matters and how we know whether we were successful. While the details in evaluating the success of issues management initiatives will vary as much as the issues themselves, issues management measurable objectives should evaluate actions to mitigate risk and identify the relative success thresholds for risk mitigation actions. Second, identifying our evaluation scheme identifies the strategy that we will use to evaluate our measurable objectives. Practitioners today have access to more measurement tools than ever before. The challenge is to find the tool that best fits the set of objectives. For example, measuring the extent and tone of media coverage is meaningful only if one of the pursued objectives is to secure the specific media attention in terms of volume, channels, tone, and so on. Other objectives, such as influencing the drafting of legislation, positioning the organization effectively relative to an industry-wide problem, or correcting allegations about a product or service, all require different metrics. As such, for each objective, the task is to identify how it can be measured and the types of information required. Additionally, how the organization can access information should also be identified. Third. Capturing lessons learned from failures and successes is vital to informing ongoing organizational strategy. In truth, this is probably the most important in ongoing issues management programs because this informs the other three stages. From what went well, what aspects of the process should be replicated in the future? For what went poorly, what were the problems and how can they be mitigated in the future? Naturally, lessons learned are not only applicable to issues management. There will be real tangible management, leadership, communication, and material lessons learned from each issue managed, no matter whether it was managed poorly or effectively. When organizations clearly demonstrate they've listened, made changes, and improved, that carries real weight with stakeholders. In short, evaluation must be an authentic activity where the organization reflects on what it can do better in the future versus simply trying to make itself look good. In the end, issues management cannot simply be about putting lipstick on a pig.